Hello everyone, this Saturday at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, once again plays host to one of the biggest fights in boxing history when Canelo Alvarez squares off against Gennady Triple G Golovkin. And joining me now to talk about that fight is one of the greatest to ever do it in the boxing ring, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I want to get right to it. A lot of boxing experts are calling this fight a throwback or a classic, comparing it to the famous Hagler Hearns fight. Do you agree with that? And if so, why do you think this fight has that type of potential? First of all, the fans are right. I agree. Throwback, 100%. Why? The styles, the demeanor, the no, you know, take no prisoners attitude. Triple G and Canelo has that spirit and come to win. Even if they didn't, say the things they, you know, would say normally in press conferences. Uh, they can't go by the script of not being who they are. That's who they are. Triple G is going to do things a little different because he's going to have to. He really is going to have to. But he's going to go back to what he is and what he's been. A knockout artist. And it's been successful, 90% ratio. So this is not going to change overnight. And that will make this, this will make this fight a throwback fight where you can really like have a fight that you give a guy an edge, but not a big wide margin. And you give a guy an edge on the other side. So you got like, like 60, 40 or, you know, or even close to that in certain situations where people say, no, I like Canelo. No, I like Triple G. That's a throwback fight. When the last time you heard that? You didn't hear that two or three weeks ago. You didn't hear that through. You, you knew who was going to fight three weeks ago. Even if you supported it or not, I didn't. But everybody knew who was going to fight, and it was all like this witch hunting. Well, maybe somebody get a hangnail. Well, maybe somebody trip over a mouthpiece. What do you mean? Y'all, now you're reaching. It's called reaching. You're trying to curate drama. No. In this fight here, Canelo versus Triple G on HBO pay-per-view and Ring TV is a fight. It's a flat-out throwback fight. Jake LaMana and all these type of guys come up from the dead, basically, conversations. You know, we, we're talking about John and Beast Montgomery, Marvin Hagler fight. That was a brutal fight. Showed a little bit of Hagler de declining of, of, of his supremacy. This is the fight, man. This is the fight that boxing needs to be able to say to people, this is a fight. There are going to be more shows in the future because there's always copycatters. Let's define the difference. That's all. That's all we're saying. Hey, and the beauty of it, I'm ringside, not getting hit watching it. That's how, how grateful, how great is this to sit there and be able to watch history be made on both ends, whether you get closer to my 20 defenses, right? 2-0, 20 or whether he bite the dust. I say he bites the dust by a split, a, a unanimous decision, well-earned, tough, drag-out fight where both fighters will have to cancel their modern career for at least six months. Millions of people tuned in to that Mayweather-McGregor fight, but that was just for that night. Is this fight between Canelo and Golovkin a part of what it's going to take to keep those people watching the sport moving forward? No, I think it's good. I think it's good sometimes that you have some mess out there to be able to have a balance of what people would choose to spend their dollars on. I mean, fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not going to be a hater. There's an audience out there for spectacle. I mean, I used to always think wrestling was real when I was like five, but till I realized the guy had a blood cap in his mouth and it dropped out before he bit it, that's where the blood came from. I realized this is not blood. It was, it was made up stuff. I think when you have a boxing match that's promoted and two guys are representing that by their records and by their demeanors, that this is going to be really a flat out fight of, of, of old Jake LaMana type of flat out Ray Robinson, Marvin Hagler of John and Beast Mugambi, Hagler versus Hearns, the best three rounds in boxing. You can say in a long time you haven't seen or even had the chills when you look at both of these guys, even when you get off this interview and be like, let me, let me YouTube these both, and you see the destruction in these opponents. 
that's not hype. I mean, this, this is really happening. And it had this fight happen at the right time. At the right time. It's key. Whether it was before and after the spectacle two or three weeks ago. It's the right time, even if that didn't exist. Even if that didn't exist, this is the right time for us to fight Triple G. And for boxing, you get a bonus after the show. Well, with the likes of Triple G, Canelo, Anthony Joshua, and Andre Ward in boxing right now, do you feel like boxing is in a good place, and is it going in the right direction? Boxing right now is in a respectful place. I'm going to go a little deeper than good. It's in a respectful place because boxing has always been, trust me, in a good place. Now, you might say, what do you mean, Bernard? Because fights didn't happen, this didn't happen, you know, the... the a respectful place means to me in business, since I'm on this side now, and see if you understand my opinion on this. The respectful place is when you have corporate America, when you have big sponsors that's feeding your radio station or this TV network or buying ads or showing up with show and just, you know, want to elbow, I'm talking about big companies elbowing each other because they want to get in. The Jerry Joneses of the world competing, pitting his bid in, his hat in, to take it to Houston at his, his Jerry Jones Stadium. What, 50, 60? Well, how many thousand people? I mean, Canelo Fort there sold it out. When you have that type of buzz, when you have that type of conversation, this is a big shot in the arm for boxing from that perspective. So to me, it's, it's, it's bigger than good is bad in this situation. When, when I made the comparison, this is the type of fans we need. We need the corporate people who came from the 80 era. When Leonard did a 7-Up commercial, remember that, remember that commercial? Come right out of the Olympics. The, the, the mean Joe Green, when the guy said, on his, remember that historic commercial? I'm telling my age now. You know, coming out the dugout and he said, hey, old man. And he turned around. It was mean Joe Green from the Pittsburgh Steelers. When you have... Corporate America, who normally don't watch fights, who normally don't care about investing in fights. Now they paying attention. The guys talk nice, they're handsome, they, they, they can fight, um, they marketable. Mainstream, that's, that's the name, that's the word I want to use. Mainstream. Come on, man, this is huge. And when you have that chemistry, Canelo definitely have it. Triple G definitely have it. They look well, they dress well, they speak well. We're not just in a box of these hoodlums that can throw punches, and that's it. Now, there might be a, 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 a set of percentage that like that role. By no means, do what you do. But then you have what I would call a promoter's dream, a marketing dream. And also, the bottom line is you can flat out fight. And that's what it's all about, man. So this, this, this is an opportunity for really both guys uh, to show that they belong the face of boxing. Uh, Bernard, you touched on this briefly already, but I wanted to get back to it. You currently hold the all-time record for successful middleweight title defenses at 20. Golovkin is going for his 19th in this fight. Uh, what are your thoughts on the chances of him breaking the record and what does it mean to you? Well, the, the records are meant to be broken. Whether we want them to be broken or not, that's why they are set. I broke somebody's record. Um, matter of fact, I'm, I know not somebody. I'm called the great Carlos Mazzone. Then it was, you know, the great marvelous Marvin Hagler. And then I went on and, and, and you know, added three or four more in there, thinking it will be about 60 years for somebody to get closer. I, I didn't do enough to be safe to be, you know, not talking about it. But it's a, to me, it's a, it's a great thing. The timing is everything because think about it. Uh, I'm involved on two fronts, and there are two major fronts in history. This fight is about history. This fight is about bringing the spotlight to boxing even more than it was before. So it means a lot. Obviously, I'll be telling you, not the truth. If I tell you I don't want him to, I want him to break the record, it's good. Why would I want him to break my record? But I know if any chance that he would not break the record, 
he has to lose and will lose come September 16th on HBO pay-per-view. This is the only chance that I have and my record have a chance for a fighting chance to stay as it is is when he get beat, not upset. When he get beat. See, someone say upset. Nah. When he get beat. The bull versus the matador. Look at this fight as that. You know, I've been, I've been blessed to be able to do a lot of things on networks in the last year and a half of my retirement. And part of it's called the perfect execution. And you've seen the segments. You see me break down fights before they happen, the big ones. Uh, I'm, I'm winning most of my predictions. But I also give a lesson and show, um, from my perspective, uh, how the fight is going to pan out. The Matador versus the Bull. I definitely have to tell you who's going to be the Bull, and I definitely don't have to tell you who's going to be the Matador and can be that from his previous fights, losing after losing to Floyd Mayweather, which is no embarrassment. To me, that was his PhD. That was his diploma. That was, that was everything. Triple G haven't learned from his fights. He just kept winning. But now you're going to wish you learned. And that's the difference between reaching this milestone and understanding about the word adjustments when you never had to make them. You can't tell yourself you make an adjustment in your mind and not actually feel that virtually, physically yourself. He haven't had it easy because he had to prepare for it. But it is a thing called mental lapse. When things in the competition is not like you want it to be, and then it finally come, can you recharge your battery tonight? Can you recharge your battery and say, you know, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get that feeling? No, I think you lost a step, buddy. I, I, I think you lost a step here and there. He's got a little camouflage because of the wins, in spite of. But, but uh, I see, look, from my perspective, yo, I think we should get him right now. Are you sure? Yeah, we gotta get him. He's ready. Because, see, uh, I don't want somebody else mediocre to get him because that would, take, that, that would be a disaster for Canelo. So, so you get him now before somebody else get him because he's right. He's like, he's like right, right there, right there, right, right there. And he's dangerous because he always got that little punch to clobber you, you know. So you can't really, like, like sleep at the wheel. You know, the things might get so good. Then you might, <laughs> oh, man, I, this guy is not what I thought he was. And bam, that would happen. So, so, so even though it's going to look a little bit surprising easily to some, you got to tell, this when the discipline come in as the all-around fighter. You got to tell yourself it's hard when it's not. So you can stay on point. Now, I had that hand glued to my head. Look at the tape. When I fought Trinidad, because that left hook. If that left hook would have got in there, it would have been some funny dancing going on. I kept that right hand up because he kept firing it. And when I took my glove off in the dressing room after all the excitement was over and obviously I won, my hand was the size of an 8-ounce glove. It was that swollen. Imagine my jaw would have been like that. There comes a time when history repeats himself. This is the time, September 16th, HBO Pay Review, Ring TV. It's going down. If you ain't got your ticket, shack up to somebody, meet a mate, stay at the fight, and then you can always walk out on them. But at the end of the day, you got to watch it. It's going to be a great fight, man. It's going to be a great fight for boxing, and we need it. We do need it. Well, Bernard, that was fantastic. I wish nothing but the best for you this weekend, and I appreciate your time. Yes, yes. Thank you, man. Enjoy the fight also. Talk to you soon.